good morning. Uh, I want to begin by uh, thanking uh, the Hirschberg Foundation for their uh, generosity and also the APA for giving me the opportunity to present the work. Um, I found uh, all of the previous presentations uh, to be a very good introduction uh, to the work that I'll be presenting myself. Um, you've heard of mutations that occur in uh, the amino acid coding regions of genes. Some of them are deleterious, others are not, yet they've been linked to uh, uh, pancreatic cancer. So the focus of the work that um, uh, we have been doing is basically post-transcriptional regulation uh, that's driven by microRNAs. Uh, this is uh, work that I've been doing for almost 12 years by now, uh, but I'm a newcomer in the pancreatic cancer con uh, context um, where I've been working for uh, a little over two years. The emphasis of the work is on interactions that are not captured by the current models that we have. And um, the hypothesis is that uh, the microRNA targeting um, of uh, messenger RNAs outside the three UTRs, where we traditionally have been looking at, is frequent and important. And also the rules that govern um, the formation of heteroduplexes between microRNAs and targets are many and complex, and we do not understand them. So um, for those that are not familiar with this um, uh, context, I, I have a, an introductory foil. Um, so a microRNA begins as a precursor transcript uh, roughly about uh, 70 to 100 nucleotides. Um, that uh, transcript will fold naturally into a hairpin, and the hairpin gets uh, processed and makes one or two products. Uh, the products can come from the left arm of the hairpin, the right arm, or both. Um, this is preparatory stuff for the last step where um, the products, one or two of them, are loaded on the so-called RNA-induced uh, silencing complex. Um, it's basically um, a complex that involves argonaut and other proteins, and what you're looking at is basically a complex that you should think of as a loaded gun. Um, the gun is the complex, the microRNA is the bullet, and the bullet has uh, specific preferences for targets. So what is the generic problem definition that we're dealing with? Um, here is your typical messenger RNA. There are three distinct regions that um, we learned about in uh, um, uh, biology 101, the five prime untranslated region, the coding region that makes the amino acid sequence, and the three prime untranslated region. So the questions that we have to um, address generically, first of all, who is targeted? What are the genes that are targeted by microRNAs? Um, which microRNAs are the ones that are loaded on uh, the gun, the um, risk complex? Um, and uh, where are the targets located? Are they in the 3 UTR, are they elsewhere, are they outside messenger RNAs? Uh, and finally, uh, is the interaction that governs the actual molecular contact between the uh, microRNA and the target um, captured by uh, current models? So the standard model has basically three tenets. It has been in existence uh, for over 10 years, and it goes as follows. Um, MicroRNA targets are primarily in the three prime untranslated region of messenger RNAs. Uh, the base pairing is governed by a six nucleotide region near the beginning of the microRNA, and that region forms Watson Creek base pairs with the target. And finally, the third tenet, which um, is also important, is that targets of microRNAs are typically conserved across organisms. So basically, this is the model. It, it, it says that, um, let's see. Okay. Um, it says that all of the action um, of the microRNAs and the complexes happens in the three UTR, and the interactions involve Watson Creek pairs um, between the seed region and the target. Um, However, there are some kinks in this model. Uh, we are among the first ones to uh, publish those kinks. Uh, this is work that dates back to 2008, uh, where we showed that microRNAs can target coding regions just as well as they target three UTRs. Um, we showed this in the context of three transcription factors that I'm sure everybody knows about, since they are involved in maintaining pluripotency of embryonic stem cells. And what you see here is the uh, five targets uh, shown in the uh, cyan here, and their location in the coding region of um, 
uh, these three uh, um, messenger RNAs. There was an additional twist to this story. Um, the twist had to do with that we, were, we weren't showing one target. Um, we were showing five or three different microRNAs. Um, of those five targets, only one had the Watson Creek uh, base pairing in, in the um, seed region. Of the five targets, only one was conserved between human and mouse. This is very important because you are sitting in the coding region, which everybody traditionally thinks of as being conserved across organisms, yet the targets of those microRNAs were not conserved between human and mouse. Most importantly, because, you know, why are you um, examining these targets? There was, um, um, we, we basically were able to prove that targeting at those five sites controls the phenotype. It controls embryonic stem cell differentiation. And in fact, we were able to um, hold back differentiation by fielding with those uh, sites. So the question is, are these findings relevant for the pancreatic cancer context? And this was basically my proposal to the Hirschberg Foundation. And what I'll be showing you now are the results of what we've done. Um, procedurally, we used uh, a method that's known as CLIPSIC. Uh, it's about four years old by now. It's a, a biochemistry technique that effectively allows you to cross-link a protein with an RNA. And in this case, you cross-link the argonaut, which is part of the risk complex, with the target. And um, I wouldn't bother with the icon. It's basically a summary of the technique. But at the end of the day, what you have is uh, a complex and a target. Um, and what the method will tell you is which microRNAs are part of the complex and where the targets are. But uh, there is a very important problem with the method. The method will not tell you which microRNA is complex with which target. Um, this requires additional algorithmic work, which is also part of what we uh, did um, in the context of this application. The way to look at it is there are people dancing in the room, and somebody comes in and says, the men on the right side of the room, the women on the left side of the room. Then we come in, and we're supposed to figure out who was dancing with whom. So CLIP will simply tell you these are the dancing partners, but I'm not telling you who is dancing with whom. And this is what we needed to do. Um, however, you know where the targets are, and this is where it starts getting interesting. Um, we did three biological replicates for two cell lines, AHP and E and uh, Mia Paca. And I'm showing the replicates here. And what I'm showing in the boxes is how many targets we found for microRNA. So basically, we asked the question, where is the risk complex sitting? And we had a false discovery rate in the um, analysis of 5%. So basically, you're looking at a, an average of about 3,500 targets, um, with um, 60 or 70 of them uh, at most being um, mistakes. Um, remember that the standard model says all of the activity happens in the yellow region. Uh, nonetheless, what you see here, and it's fairly consistent across all the biological replicates, um, there is a lot of targeting that happens in five UTRs and also in coding regions. Oh, sorry. Um, we also, the, uh, ah, unfortunately, the, uh, the circles don't show well, uh, but basically what you see here is how many genes we find been targeted in their five UTRs, in the two cell lines, and the, their coding regions. As you can see, there are differences between HP and, e and Miapaca in terms of which genes are targeted, and also differences between five UTR targeting of uh, microRNAs and coding region targeting of um, microRNAs. So basically, these are distinct locations where microRNAs and the risk complex are sitting. These are regulatory elements. They are basically telling the gene what to do. They upregulate it, they downregulate it. Um, just an assortment of the things that are in the previous foil. You look at the numbers, I, I basically selected um, some, and I, I put them in lexicographic order. It's a very small subset of the total, but I'm sure you'll recognize in this list many of the uh, typical culprits that everybody has been looking at. 
there are two things to remember. These things are A, known, well, some of these things are known to be mutated uh, in pancreatic cancer, but the new element here is they are also being controlled through their coding regions and their five UTRs by microRNAs. So these are regulator, regulatory elements that we haven't known about until now. Um, and how many microRNAs are involved? Again, the numbers are fairly high. Um, there is several hundred microRNAs that are responsible for those targets. These are the distinct bullets that are loaded on the risk that will control these over 3,000 genes. So this is what the standard model um, looked like, and basically the emerging model that um, also represents the work we're doing is effectively this. Um, and that's a simplified version um, of what we're dealing with. There are two elements here. There is additional um, interactions that we're finding between your favorite genes and microRNAs that are um, present and abundant in either normal pancreas or pancreatic cancer. And there is a second, oh, okay, sorry about that. And there's a second element that you can see that some of the arrows have a WC for Watson Creek and some say non-Watson Creek. So even in the three UTR region that we've been studying forever, we're finding interactions that are governed by rules that are not captured by the standard model. So we're seeing new things in the 3 UTR, and we're seeing lots of new things in coding regions and 5 UTRs. So in summary, the work um, allowed us to discover many unexpected microRNA targets in 5 UTRs and coding regions. Many of them um, are in, uh, involved in non-canonical interactions that are not captured by the standard model. Many of the genes that we find being targeted through five UTRs and coding regions belong to important pathways or are mutated in uh, pancreatic cancer or both. And uh, people say, well, you know, this is complex. And my answer is, well, yes, it is, but it's always been there. Um, the new element is we know how to handle it. We, I view this as a really important boost in our efforts to figure out how microRNAs control uh, messenger RNAs. Um, the genes that you've all been studying, um, we now have a handle on uh, who is controlling them through what sites. And finally, I just want to um, thank a number of people, in particular Kevin Kwan, who is an MD-PhD student in my lab, and Phil Lohr, uh, who is a software engineer. Um, they are, uh, they've done uh, most of the work that I presented. Um, I also want to uh, thank my colleague Jonathan Brody, who got me into pancreatic cancer in the first place several years ago by showing how, how important it is to work in this area. And finally, I want to uh, thank the funding organizations that have been supporting the work, and in particular, the uh, Hirschberg Foundation for their generosity. Thank you.